Oh. Being 7 o'clock, we'll call the main to order. And there he is. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mayor Bospis. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner Gage. Here. Commissioner Gary. Here. Commissioner Lynn. Here. Commissioner Simmons. Here. Commissioner Torty. Here. Now we're all here. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. Would ask those with uh, cell phones if they would please put them on uh, vibrate or uh, silence them. We would appreciate it. Item number one is the public comment on scheduled agenda items. Any person may reserve time to speak on an agenda item, not to exceed three minutes per person. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item? Yes, sir. Uh, what item? Uh, let's see. 4C? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Uh, the consent agenda, city clerk. Under the consent agenda, a minute approval. One, approval of the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of September 21st. Recommended action, approve the minutes of the regular city commission meeting of September 21st, 2015. Item two, acceptance of the minutes of the following boards and commissions. A, Airport Advisory Board of July 9th. B, Downtown Development Authority of July 8th, August 12th, and September 9th. C, PEHP Police Patrol Unit, September 10th. D, PEHP Police Sergeant's Unit of August 26th. E, PEHP Public Works Unit of August 26th, F, Police and Fire Pension Board of September 16th, and G, Sault Ste. Marie Housing Commission of August 20th. Recommended action, accept the minutes of the various boards and commissions. Item B, communications. One, from the Planning Commission, recommendation to approve a resolution to vacate without the retention of utility easements the full width of the east 200 feet of the alley within block 8, Hall's edition. Recommended action, schedule a public hearing on a resolution to vacate without the retention of utility easements with the full width of the east 200 feet of the alley within block 8, Hall's edition for the October 19, 2015 regular city commission meeting. Item 2 under communications is from the Community Action Human Resource Authority. MDOT Project Authorization 2012-0162-P10. Recommended action, authorize the city manager and city clerk to execute MDOT Project Authorization 2012-0162-P10, fiscal year 2016, section 5311, operating formula grants for rural areas program. Item three is from Ginksco Development, request for a letter of support for a payment in lieu of taxes for Bridge Village Apartments located at 591 Myrtle Elliott Circle. Recommended action, authorize the city assessor to execute a letter of support, support for a payment in lieu of taxes for Bridge Village Apartments. Item C, special orders of business. One, first reading of an ordinance to amend Article 4 of Chapter 2, Section 2-185. Recommended action, schedule a second reading of an ordinance to amend Article 4 of Chapter 2, Section 2-185 for the October 19, 2015 regular city commission meeting. Item 2 under special orders of business is scheduling a public hearing for SL-2N-15 and SL-2W-15 to confirm single lot special assessments. Recommended action, set a public hearing date on the confirmation of SL-2N-15 and SL-2W-15 for October 19, 2015 City Commission meeting. Okay, thank you. Is there a commissioner that would like something further explained on the consent agenda? Uh, Commissioner Torney. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Support. 
It's been moved and supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Boswis? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item three, communications A from the Planning Commission, recommendation to approve a city-initiated request to rezone certain properties owned by MCM Marine Inc. and MCM Properties LLP from I-2 to Marine Services, approximately 8.9 acres, and from tourist to Marine Services, approximately 9.3 acres. Okay, thank you. Uh, city Manager Turner. Thank you, Mayor. As commissioners are aware, at the January 19th, 2015 City Commission meeting, the Commission expressed direction to the Planning Commission and staff to create a Marine Services Zoning District. At the Planning Commission's direction, staff then prepared a draft version of the new district language for the Planning Commission's review and comment. The draft of the Marine Services Zoning District was prepared and presented to the Planning Commission for comment at its May 14, 2015 meeting. The Planning Commission subsequently held a public hearing on the language at its June 25th meeting and recommended unanimously that the new district as termed marine services be created. The City Commission acted on the Planning Commission's recommendation at its July 20th and August 3rd meetings, adopting an ordinance which formally created the Marine Services Zoning District. With the new district having been created, the last step in the overall process regarding MCM Marine is to rezone that company's property to the new district. It should be noted that this is being initiated by the city rather than the applicant. Approximately 8.9 acres are proposed to be rezoned from I-2 to Marine Services and approximately 9.3 acres proposed to be rezoned from Tourist to Marine Services. An aerial photograph showing the parcels proposed for rezoning has been included within the agenda packet. As indicated, much of the focus has been on the appropriateness of the expansion of the I-2 zoning district as was being initially requested by MCM. With East Portage Avenue having spent the last 50 plus years trending away from industrial uses toward less intense uses such as multifamily, residential, tourist, and recreational type uses, staff was concerned that the I-2 district was simply too broad in terms of what it would allow. <coughs> the adopted future land use map envisions a continuation of the deindustrialization trend and identifies the waterfront properties as general and specialized commercial as opposed to in general industrial. That fact, as well as the concerns expressed by property owners within the vicinity, led staff to come to the conclusion that both of the previous rezoning requests from tourists I-2 are not in keeping with the master plan. Proponents of the applicant's previous request cited the unique and necessary services which MCM provides to waterway users users, as well as the city's history of having a working waterfront as being critical considerations. With the recent adoption of the Marine Services Zoning District, which was drafted with the intention of addressing both neighborhood concerns and MCM's operational needs, there now exists an alternative approach which was not previously available. As noted in previous analyses, the master plan calls for the city to work to ensure that all future waterfront development will benefit the city and help attract visitors to the area. With the additional requirements within the Marine Services Zoning District, particularly with respect to outdoor storage, the administration is optimistic that those issues, which constituted a significant percentage of complaints received regarding the property, will be significantly reduced, if not outright eliminated, through effective administration. Making the property more attractive will enhance the overall attractiveness of the city. The specific limitations on outdoor storage within the Marine Services Zoning District regulations, um, particularly as it relates to where and how long certain items may be able to be stored outdoors, were drafted to address the particular needs in this instance. Until this point, all of the previous conversations had only involved MCM's tourist zone property, despite the fact that roughly half of its land area is currently zoned I-2 with an eye toward the future and restricting the heavier uses that could occur under this current, zone, current zoning designation, staff is recommending that the entirety of the property be, rec be rezoned to Marine Services Zoning District. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the City Commission <coughs> approve the included ordinance and schedule a second reading of the same for the October 19th, 2015 City Commission meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, City Commission, Commissioner Lynn. 
Uh, Your Honor, so move the city manager's recommendation on the public hearing, which would be October 19th, 2015. Support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? Hey, I, Commissioner Shimmons. It's not really a question, it's just <clears throat> a comment. This has been very difficult to get to this point <laughs> where it's actually coming for final approval. And I know um, mm -hmm. that we all realize that the people who live in that vicinity have been very unhappy um, with many of the things that have occurred in that area from all the debris and old equipment and such to the long grass. But I'm hopeful <coughs> that under um, this new ordinance that the city will take very pay very close attention to the property and make sure that it is kept up and in good shape so that the people that live there do not have to continue to be stressed and upset over the condition of MCM. That's all. Just, and just along those same lines, I, I would think that we have been working with MCM Marine these past uh, eight months, I would think. Um, how is the um, process? It looks <coughs> a lot, lot cleaner than it was um, initially. Uh, City Mayor, maybe you'd like to comment on that. Uh, you're, you're absolutely correct, Mayor. It's been approximately a 12 or 13 month process through which the administration has been working with MCM Marine. And over that time, I believe we've developed a strong working relationship to the point where uh, site visits can be conducted and we work alongside the property owner as well as their contractors to uh, pinpoint problematic um, issues and ordinance violations and they've been very responsive to correcting those as well as uh, improving uh, property conditions that were noted during other inspections. So I think that as it stands right now their property is uh, substantially within compliance of the city ordinances and uh, they have plans within the next two weeks where city staff has worked with uh, their contractor to cut remaining long grass. So I think it's come a long way and we've certainly built a good rapport with the property owner. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Geary. And to uh, couple on that, I guess I would ask that it's your opinion that the Marine Services District is more stringent and along the lines of what the neighborhood people were asking for. And if you look at the uh, map of proposed rezoning, uh, we are actually taking half of the property which was industrial and putting some much more restriction on it with the Marine Services uh, District, correct? That's correct, Commissioner Geary. It would reduce the uh, potential for those areas that are zoned I-2 to be used for heavier, heavier industrial uses in the future, and then the areas that are tourist zoned currently, uh, it puts the additional outdoor storage restrictions on those areas. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? We have a motion and support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosmith? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, item number four is the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Item A under the city manager's report would provide for the award of a bid for the purchase of primary settling tanks, including equipment, at the wastewater <coughs> treatment plant. I've uh, requested that our DPW director address the commission on this matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jim Morrill. Good evening. Mm -hmm. uh, evening. In 2012, we reviewed all the equipment in the wastewater treatment plant uh, to determine uh, what we need to invest in to keep the plant running until its eventual rehab in a few years uh, after the CSO program was completed. Um, and we graded everything on three criteria. Is the mic on? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Would you like to start over? <laughs> yeah. uh, we graded all the equipment on three criteria. Uh, the first one is how necessary is it to the operations? I mean, can, can we treat the sewage without this piece of equipment? Uh, the second, will it be removed or modified in the eventual plant rehab? We don't want to pump a bunch of money in something we're going to yank um, when the plant is redone in seven to ten years. Um, and how does this expenditure fit into our long-term budget plans? You know, if money talks, if we can't afford to do it, we're going to have to figure out a way to get around that type of equipment. Um, one of the items that met all these criteria are the, uh, the cleaning equipment in, this, in our primary settling tanks. Now, our primary tanks are 100 foot long. We have four of them. They're 100 foot long rectangular tanks that the flow uh, enters at the beginning of the treatment process and everything slows down. 
the flow slows down and, and uh, the sludge settles out of it. It's a very simple process. Um, new plants are being built today with almost the identical tanks. So whatever in investments we put in these tanks now is going to be, you know, they're going to be here 50 years from now. Um, the tanks that we have now are, were our original to the 1959 uh, plant construction, as is most of the equipment that cleans them. Uh, there are bits and pieces that have been changed over the decades. Just like a car, a 50-year-old car, you're going to have this, you know, different parts on that too. But uh, ultimately, they're pretty much the same they were when they were built, you know, that long ago. Um, and inside these tanks are a series of uh, flights and skimmers. They're driven by chains and pulleys, and they're, they're kind of, um, they're simply, they're, they're, the, the concept is very simple, but uh, they're, they're, they're easily, uh, um, they're hard to work on, and ours are at the end of their lifespan. We need new ones. Um, we replaced this cleaning system in number two tank last year, in the last fiscal year. This year um, is we're planning on doing number three, and the next two in the next two fiscal years. So this is a long, uh, this is a, you know, it's a, a, a well thought out planned goal of ours to, to get these back to original condition again, and they're going to be in service for 50 years. So um, that's my recommendation tonight. We uh, spend the money to um, redo the number two, excuse me, the number three uh, primary settling tank. Any questions of Jim Wall? Thank you, Jim. Thank you. City manager, anything additionally? Uh, nothing additional. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Gage. Uh, so move that the City Commission approve the purchase of primary settling tank cleaning system parts from Brentwood Industries, Inc. of Reading, Pennsylvania at a cost of $16,077.79, being a little better meeting specifications. Support. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Boston? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. <clears throat> Motion carried. Thank you. Item B under the city manager's report would provide for the approval of change order number two with Baco Construction for the CSO phase C3 project. On this matter, I've requested that our city engineer, Linda Basista, address the commission. Thank okay. you. Very busy summer for our city yeah, engineer. Commission. Yeah, it has been a busy summer and summer and things are starting to wind down though. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, the CSO project has been uh, proceeding since May of this year and uh, we're uh, quite a ways along in the construction, not only in, in this summer, but for the total project. So by the end of this, this summer, we'll be two-thirds of the way done Excellent. so there won't be nearly as much work next year as there has been this year so that's a bright spot in the future uh, but uh, as always in the course of a such a project as this we uh, have changes that are made throughout the project one was the uh, the need to replace the 30 inch storm sewer in the 500 block of Cedar Street it was determined to be too close uh, to the sanitary sewer to safely install. So we uh, had a, a new sewer installed at a cost of 99900 We also had an additional type of curb placed on Dawson Street at a cost of $5,400. And then we added back in some of the work that was taken out in change order number one when you awarded the contract to Baco. There was a large deduct change order that we uh, deducted uh, the 400 block of Cary Street and Lyon Street from the project in order to stay within our proposed construction budget. And But as a project, shortly after that, it was determined that we actually taken out too much because we still had needed to get into the intersections to ultimately do that uh, work and so that's being added back in with this change order and also some items that have gone over original contract qu uh, quantity in the total amount of two hundred and sixteen thousand five hundred and seventy seven dollars so we have a total uh, change order Tobacco's contract in the amount of $321,877, which is well within the 6% contingency set aside for the project and uh, actually represents uh, less than, it, since we're two-thirds way through the, through the project and it's, it's less than two-thirds of our contingency, of course. So 
I think we're in really good shape uh, in the project uh, with our budget. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from our city engineer? Thank you, Linda. <coughs> city manager, anything additional? Uh, nothing additional, thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, city Commissioner, Commissioner Bauer. $321,000 change order, Verna Lawrence would freak. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so moved that the commission approve change order number two to Baco construction contract for the CSO phase three project <clears throat> in the amount of $321,877.50. Support. So three of them. You're right. No, I think she'd have blown yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. And as we all know, in construction projects, you get into the 100-year-old streets that we're working on, or 300-year-old streets, cool. well over well over 100 probably. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen, but we're less than 3% of the total project as a change order, which is Did you Commissioner Did anybody see some of the piping that was taken out of Ashman Street? They had it up on the sidewalk. That's got to be 100 years old. Oh, I mean, I'm sure. Way back. Mm -hmm. We're an old town. We're an old community. Yep. And Ashman Street is looking. Uh, you notice all the curbing is. I mean, all the sidewalks are in now, so they should start uh, blacktopping fairly soon. I would think, right? Correct. Or My understanding: the project will be substantially completed by October 21st. Oh, excellent! A lot of the community will be happy. Um, so we have a motion and support. Any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Lynn? Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bospas? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item C under the city manager's report pertains to the Riverside Village Trailer Park account receivable. The commissioners are aware on Tuesday, August 4th, 2015, the residents of Riverside Village Trailer Park received notices informing them that their water service was to be terminated on September 15th due to a failure on the part of the then owner of Riverside Village Trailer Park to fully comply with two separate payment plans negotiated with the city. On Tuesday, August 11th, Mr. Joe Spadafore contacted my office indicating he'd been named power of attorney and that he'd make a good faith payment towards the amount owing of over $49,000 at that time. Mr. Spadafore then attended the August 17th and September 8th meetings to discuss the matter further and thereafter made a $20,000 uh, payment toward the amount past due, as well as paying the recently issued bill at the time in the amount of over $7,100 for a total payment of $27,145.24. As commissioners are aware, Mr. Spadafore was informed by the commission to continue negotiating with the administration on the subject matter. As a result of continued discussions between staff and Mr. Spadafore and Ms. Anselmi, Spadafore's sister, the presented repayment plan has been tentatively agreed upon for the past due amount of the water count to be brought current by Mr. Spadafore and Ms. Anselmi. It should be noted that as a result of the September 8, 2015 meeting, that the date of water service termination was moved from September 15th to October 31st. If the agreement is approved, the total amount currently past due, $29,728.04, would be entered into the agreement and the amounts established in Appendix A would be due in accordance with the terms of the agreement. Critically, the agreement would require that payments be made on newly issued bills at the same time that the current amount owing is brought down. For Commissioner's review, a printout of the current balance has been included within the agenda. It's my recommendation that the City Commission approve the repayment plan as presented. And although it does provide for smaller payments initially, it also reflects the fact that a number of uh, units have moved out of the park and that over time it's anticipated by the owner that <coughs> may, may, may come in and rebuild the revenue stream. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this time, uh, I think it was Joe Spadafore wanted to make a couple of comments. If you'd identify yourself, sure. we'd appreciate it. Joe Spadafore, Riverside Village Council Mayor. Just if you had any questions for me, I pretty much have it all laid out, the plan, and I... Mr. Turner. So I didn't know if there's any questions you had okay. for us. Okay. Anyone have any questions of Mr. Spadafore? Uh, Commissioner Gage. I guess, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> it's going okay. It's a lot better this month than it was last month. Um, I got to learn not to talk much, so I'm going to try to keep it down here. We are at 26 uh, residents, 
Uh, we're having problems with six of them. We did have uh, three new people move into the park last, last week, so that's a good thing. Um, we've cleaned up the park. I don't know if any of you folks have been by to take a chance. Yes. Take a look at it. We've got some great people living there that are doing a lot of work for us. My season's slowing down, so I'll be up here a little bit more, and I'll get a chance to do a little bit more of that cleaning myself. We filled up one dumpster. Hopefully, they'll pick this one up tomorrow, and we'll have a new dumpster ready to go. We were going to bring, I told you, we were going to bring two or three dumpsters in at the recommendation of the company. They said probably you don't want to leave them outside because they tend to get filled up overnight by other people than uh, the people in the park. So we're bringing in one at a time, and we have it in our, our barn that's, that's uh, locked up at night. So to answer your question, it, it could be worse. Okay. Anyone else? Well, Commissioner Gary. I just wanted to uh, say thank you for, uh, you're obviously a person of integrity. I know that the problems weren't caused by yourself. And uh, it's, uh, we were uh, duly hard on you, which I think was, was uh, um, good. <laughs> but you obviously have come through, you've come to the meetings, you've stepped forward and you did what you said. and. Uh, I have every confidence that you will fix the park up and that you will adhere to the agreement. And uh, we appreciate having business people that step forward and address their problems and don't uh, run away from them. So thank you very much. Congratulations on that and thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Lynn. Uh, I've got a question for you. Yep. Uh, the former manager, uh, her name is Spatafort. Yes. Uh, that would be your mother? mother it would have been a. How do I put this the best way? It would have been my father's second wife. Okay. How's that? Good. That was politically correct. People yes. were paying. I think Mr. Bauer brought this up at the uh, September 8th meeting. I was not here. But I'd had the same question. People are paying, expecting their water to be paid and other bills. She was not doing that. That money had to go somewhere. Have you had any luck of finding out where the money went? Honestly, not at this moment. Um, we're working with one of the detectives. Um, it's been very hard to get a paper trail. Um, when there's a divorce going on, it's just hard to get things. You just can't, it seems like they can get things, but I can't get things, if that makes any sense. So. Um, trying to keep the park going and my business downstate going. Yes, I'm working on it, but I don't know. It's just, it's, it's hard to tell. There's, it's Hopefully. a mess. That part is a mess. That has not gotten any better. Hopefully, uh, you'll find out where the money went. Uh, hopefully we will. I, I, I have good faith that someday we will find out shortly once we can get those, that paper trail. And there is a good paper trail, just getting it to the right people and helping us figure out where it went. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. Commissioner Bauer. You know, um, first of all, thanks and good luck. Um, I think if the city learns anything from this, then maybe I'm wrong. But I think that we, all of us, the city and you, Mr. Spadafore, probably would have been better off had we played hardball from the get-go instead of trying to be nice, you know, and, and deal with that situation the way we did. I think if there's a lesson to be learned here, that's the lesson, is that, you know, we all play by the same rules. I'll tell you something, I'll try to be very quick about this. I had a uh, fill valve go on.
on my toilet. And you know, sometimes they can go and they can go undetected for a while. And the city is good because they allow you to, you know, if your water bill's out of whack, mm -hmm. you know, they let you bring it in. And as a matter of fact, we did that with uh, the other Mrs. Spadafore in, you know, trying to help, you know, deal with them. And um, so I, I uh, took my uh, bill in and I paid my regular amount, but I did not bring in the receipt for the fill valve in a timely manner. So the next thing I know, I'm getting a cutoff notice because I'm $53 in arrears on my water bill. And it was, you know, that's nothing wrong with that and not unexpected. So I brought in the receipt, you know what I mean? And they did the correction and it's, that's fine. But what I'm saying is that, you know, I think that we should all, we should all be under the same guidelines. And that is that you gotta stay on top of these things before they escalate. And I think that the city does that like 99.9% .9 of the time, but we need to learn our lesson from this and we need to make that 100% of the time. That there will be no exceptions from this point on. Except of course the, the regular exception, you know, as I just said, that where you allow them to fix their Time. issue and then, well, whatever it is. I'm yeah, willing to trade are, water bills with you if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are, those, are, those are excellent comments, and we've always had a zero policy on water shutoffs. If you were over $50 or less, you lost your, you know, I mean, you got a shutoff notice. And I, I think the, the transition between managers, I'm guessing, got in, in, involved in this, included in this, and it kind of went a little further than it needed to because I think we had to, we had to do something, and I'm, I'm glad it ultimately came to that, but it should have been maybe a little sooner, and that's one thing I think we, we have learned, that um, those are unfortunate instances, but we don't want to be in the business of other people's business. And, and it's important that we manage the water accounts and the, and the sewer accounts and, and anything that we're responsible for and respond in a, in a timely fashion. But when you're looking at 60 families involved and they think they're continuing to pay what they think they're paying and uh, it's not, not happening that the bill's getting paid and you try to set up uh, payment plans and they don't get met, and I, and I think uh, you're absolutely right, Commissioner Barr. Commissioner Gary, and I'm going to... I make the motion to approve the repayment plan and agreement as presented. Yep. Support. It's been moved supported. Any other comments? Commissioner Lynn. Well, we have a store in Munising, Michigan. You're one day past due, you have a letter. They don't fool around. <laughs> okay. Something to take a look at. Uh, thank you, Mr. Spadafore. Thank you. Have a good evening. Good luck. Uh -huh. Roll call, please. Commissioner Lynn. Yes. Commissioner Shimmons? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Boss? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Gage? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. <coughs> uh, in front of the City Commission on the dais is a memorandum that would provide authorization for a right of way easement and memorandum of understanding with Cloverland Electric Cooperative to provide electrical service to the water treatment plant cell tower site. I'd respectfully request that the, this be added to the agenda for consideration and approval. Okay, thank you. And the rules for adding agenda items is uh, seven zero vote. Correct. Okay, Commissioner Bauer. So move that we add this particular item to the agenda. <coughs> okay. It's been moved, supported. Uh, the Cloverland easement. Um, roll call, please. Commissioner Shimmons. Yes. Commissioner Twardy. Yes. Mayor Bosman. Yes. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Gary. Yes. Commissioner Lynn. Yes. Motion carried. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> As noted within the memorandum, with the construction of the cell tower site at the water treatment plant, Cloverland Electric Cooperative is requesting that the city grant an easement for the required electrical service necessary at the site. The easement will cover approximately 180 linear feet of electric line, which will run between the right-of-way and the on-site transformer. All Cloverland easements are standard in language, which permits them to extend service to adjacent properties along roads, drives, property lines, and other <coughs> reasonable routes. Cloverland has additionally agreed to enter into the presented memorandum of understanding with the city as a means to provide additional protections to Sherman Park and to ensure that any extension of Cloverland's lines through the park are approved by the city. Accordingly, it's my recommendation that the city commission authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the right-of-way easement agreement with Cloverland Electric Cooperative 
and additionally that it authorize the city manager to execute the included memorandum of understanding with Clover and Electric that's been presented. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Twarty. I move the city manager's recommendation. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Twarty. Yes. Mayor Bosmus. Yes. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Gage. Yes. Commissioner Gary. Yes. Commissioner Lynn. Yes. Commissioner Shimmons. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. That concludes the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. And now we're on the status reports. Item A under the status report pertains to the Parks and Recreation Survey that has been released. As the Commission is aware, the uh, City Administration has been working throughout the year to update the five-year Master Recreation Plan. Um, this was kicked off in an effort to support the LSSU Center for Freshwater Research and Education in line with Commission goals. And all City in residents with an interest in the future of the City Parks and Recreation activities are encouraged to complete the survey. Uh, hand completed survey forms are available at City Hall and there's also a link online for the completion of the survey. Uh, responses will be accepted through Friday, October 16th. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Anyone have any questions on the survey? Commissioner Gage. Uh, this is not a question, but I just wanted to comment and say that I appreciate um, the student we have working on this, Alex Strobin, um, who's a Lake State alumni. He's going through the Northern Michigan University Master, uh, Public Administration, Master in Public Administration program. Um, yeah, and I know Alex personally, and he Facebook messages me quite a bit about the status of the, the parks plan that he's putting together. And if, if this number is accurate, he says he's put in already 360 hours on the program, so, or on the, the plan, so I just wanted to thank him publicly. Okay, great. Anyone else? Next item. I didn't begin under status report it pertains to the curbside leaf pickup program as outlined within the memo. Uh, the city will begin its 2015 fall curbside leaf pickup program on Monday, October 19th. Uh, the Public Works Department will pick up loose leaves from curbside throughout the city. And residents are please reminded that leaves should be raked into piles at the curbside. And a guarantee pickup leaves should be raked to the curbside no later than Sunday, October 25th. Uh, loose leaves only will be picked up and the city will, will, won't plan to pick up leaves from the alleys. And uh, also that compost facility, the comp compost facility will have expanded fall drop-off hours. That will be in effect from October 26th to the 31st. And the uh, schedule will be placed online. But it's Monday, October 26th from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's the same for Friday, October 30th. And then on Wednesday, October 28th and Saturday, October 31st. Excuse me, the Wednesday, October 28th is from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. And Saturday, October 31st is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that will be online. But as, as in the past, it's a moving target and certainly look forward Thank to it. Thank you. I was going to mention that, that uh, at this point we are uh, well behind fall colors. Um, we should at least be partly seven to ten days. And uh, we may have leaves on trees in the first part of November. Um, I'm guessing uh, here we are in the first week in October and we have a bit of color but not full color yet. And if you look north into Sioux, Ontario, you can normally see the uh, Laurentia Mountain Range, which is really colorful at this time of the year. There's not much color over there yet. So um, it will be sort of in flux, and we'll, and we'll see how that goes. But we do appreciate um, people raking their leaves um, to the curbside, not on the, if they would not put them on the roadway, but leave them behind the curb. Uh, we continue to say that because in heavy rains, the uh, leaves on the, on the uh, roadways tend to pond water and it can't get to the catch basin so um, had, keeping them on the curbside behind the curb on the grassy areas normally uh, we are appreciated by certainly the uh, administrative staff and the and uh, residents in the area I'm sure and also the uh, street department as they're picking them up so appreciate that anyone else any additionally Commissioner Twardy thank you uh, just a comment I just Hope that we can get them all raked and cleaned up before we get four feet of snow. Well, <laughs> that's that's always the <laughs> what a mess. That's always the quest. <laughs> Commissioner Gage. I hope you guys didn't just jinx it, and that snow is going to come even sooner. Now. Yeah. And if it does, I'm going to give people your phone numbers. So yeah. uh, Commissioner. Uh, I'm Actually, Commissioner I'm hoping Mauer. that everybody has a curb by. Yeah. Then. yeah. <laughs> I think you will. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner Shimmons. Is there going to be an actual um, schedule 
that sets forth the areas, you know, when you're going to be there, the day sure. that you'll be there? Mm -hmm. We'll try. It's really depends on when they come back. Uh, because you know I'm held personally they, responsible. <laughs> <laughs> and Lakeshore certainly has uh, a significant number of trees and, and normally they've spent an awful lot of time in, in those areas, so I'm sure they will again. Anyone else? And oh. that concludes the status report section. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Item number six, matters presented by the public. Is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? <clears throat> Okay, here you know, we're going on to item number seven, matters presented by the commission. Excuse me, uh, Commissioner Twardy. Yeah, thank you. Well, you might even want to elaborate. I just wanted to mention what a great day we had for Oktoberfest oh, gosh, downtown. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I didn't get the numbers, but I'm sure Justin has some sort of ideas on numbers. But to me, it looked like record number of people. I really appreciated how you had outdoor service also. And there was just a steady stream of people. Mm -hmm. I did the International Festival of, Festival of Races. I did the bridge run that morning. Yeah. And it was mm -hmm. just really nice to be able to go right from the bridge run to breakfast downtown. Mm -hmm. I didn't know about your breakfast. I wish I would have known about that. But went to a different restaurant Such in town. Yeah. yeah. And then just to be able to go right into October. Yeah. It was a really great day. The, the activity, weather was perfect. The activity on, on Portage was uh, never better, it looked like. Um, it, all day long, uh, much like the sidewalk sales and uh, encampment that we've had this, this summer, um, and it tends to look like it's building um, each, each summer, fall type of thing for la last year and now this year. It's just been a lot of people coming downtown, taking advantage of the, the great weather and, and the customers and the businesses uh, and opening their doors. It's, it's um, just very good to see, and it's certainly um, the, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Chamber of Commerce, the uh, DDA with Justin Nepper and all the people that volunteer to make these things. I know I see Dave Samp in the front row here, and Dave is, a, is a normally here all the time, and uh, he continues to give a, of his time, and a, a number of, uh, of folks, Allison's here too, and I, I see that uh, you know they, they continue to uh, share their, their wealth of time um, and commitment to the, community, to the community of Sault Ste. Marie, and we do appreciate that, and all the other volunteers that, that make those things happen, because we all know without volunteers, we, those things wouldn't go on and the organization that has to occur to make those things happen. So we, we sit here really appreciate that, and I'm sure the, the businesses uh, that are affected uh, appreciate that also. So, no, it's great. You bet, Dave. Anyone else? Commissioner Lynn. Your Honor, I would so move that we adjourn this meeting. Support. It's been moved supported. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose the same sign. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Last time I'm going to ask. What do I hit first? That I can do. Can you come down? Because you, you have to bring windows back up. Or sign out. You know, you think I could remember that? Yeah, you do. What happened, now what happens? Now go down here. If it's, and that if it's earlier, and truthfully for me, it would be better for me as a